Good morning and welcome back to another video and today is another day of the Zero to Gold Cap Challenge. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so for today we are farming up the Serpent Shrine Caverns and that is because it has a chance of dropping some really good battle pets along with a load of BC items which we can sell on the auction house for a fair amount. Now, same again, you can usually clear this for about 10 minutes, so give or take how slow you're going to be. And to be honest, it's by far one of my most favorite farms to do because I find it just so simple just to be able to do this, especially with a demon hunter, you can like bypass a load of stuff like flying down and all that jazz. So really, really good farm and to be honest, we've just done it on our other four characters. We have gained all of the stuff and we have done a load of disenchanting. Pretty much the same as yesterday, but not with the Sunwell, but with the Serpent's Orange Caverns. So this is my route in which I like to take for doing the Serpent Shrine Caverns. And we're going to be doing the run through. So aside from all of that, the Serpent Shrine Caverns has a few battle pets which actually drop from this actual raid and this is a few variant of the bosses. Now for all purposes, the these little um, underbog colossuses, they're actually able to be herbalism. So you can use herbalism on them and get a load of additional loot if you do have a herbalist uh, running through the actual raid. So if you want to bear that in mind, you can gain a snag a few extra gold from those. Now, this is one of the bosses in particular that we come in to actually farm, and he drops the Tainted Waveling, and we didn't actually get it this time, but we also got a pattern which we can actually sell in the auction house, which is the Boots of, of Utter Darkness. So we're going to place that in the bag over there. And aside from that, that's about it so far. There are uh, tend to be quite a lot of different types of mobs for this actual raid. By far a very good farm to do, just because of the high density of mobs actually leading up to the bosses. I think the only boss that we do not actually do, and is the optional boss which you can fish up just over here in the strange pool, you can basically just bypass him because he drops nothing unless you're coming for transmog for your character in particular. But if you were doing gold farming, you it's probably not worth your time even doing it because it's only a couple of extra gold for the soulbound items to be vended. So you're basically wasting time. So for this one, I tend to just gather up all of these mobs and I do this in packing instead of just gathering them all up in one go. Uh, I find that they lose aggro really, really easily when I'm doing this with any of my characters. So I tend to just kill them as the pack comes along. Now, that being the case, we have a couple more bosses which actually drop battle pets, and we will be coming up to the next one, which is usually the most valuable uh, battle pet, so to speak. Before this day, we've actually managed to get about two battle pets already, so I'm hoping that we can get another one, but the drop chance on these are seeming to be very, very poor when it comes to battle pet farming for five characters. So I don't know if it's just bad RNG for myself because I don't know the drop chances off by heart. But at the end of the day, it's not overly too bad. Two battle pets, one of them's like worth 2,500 gold or something along those lines. We'll cover this in the overview. So what I'm doing now is just gathering up all of these mobs before we go up to the boss and I will be burning them down as and when they come along. So that being the case, we'll just burn those down. I'm gathering up all of the green items so I can then disenchant these as well because it's still worth it because on my realm, even still, it's very much worth just destroying that. We've just killed an Illadari dude, even though I am an Illadari. So that lore right there. But um, there are there does tend to be quite a lot of mobs when we're actually doing this farm. So that being the case, this route is kind of weird, so to speak. So let's just close down Loot Appraiser for a second. Basically, what I like to do with this actual farm is I come in, I go up, and then all I do is go and do a loop to loop round, and then just go straight to Vash. Uh, basically, just ooh. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I will place. A better way of doing it is I'll place my route on a map 
in this video brand back here and you guys can actually be able to see what the route is that I'm taking so you can copy it if you really want to. We've actually got another pattern of the Boots of Utter Darkness once again so that's pretty good we've got double of it but it's not worth that much it's about nine gold for those so not that good when it comes to the grand scheme of recipes. We have got some actually uh, decent stuff at this moment in time but mainly we've been making I think the majority of the stuff that we've actually been managed to get a hold of today is mainly just the battle pets and the enchanting mats. So I don't know if it's really a bust for doing this for the hours worth of farming, but at this moment in time, it's seeming to be quite beneficial, like for gold wise per hour, because it takes about 10, 10 odd minutes to actually be able to do it. So as long as we're under 12 minutes to clear this raid, you can do this with five characters in an hour. And that's pretty damn good. So we've just gained another pattern, which is the Boots of the Protector, which is a valued at 213 gold. That's a bit more like it. Actually, I don't think I got that recipe today, but from this actual raid, you do get a hell of a lot of recipes. Like I've got a lot of recipes. <laughs> and um, I'm not going to scoff it. We actually got the Battle Pet as well, which is the Tide Skipper, and the D Tide Skipper Battle Pet is actually pretty good. It's at 2,782 gold for one of those, and we got some Hurricane Boots patterns. I think I've already got like two of those recipe, and we forgot to loot our Murlocs that we burned down. Now, obviously, I'm not going to kill all those Murlocs because time is of the essence, and if they're in my way, I'll kill them. If not, I won't bother because they don't really drop anything of that great. Just maybe an extra green or something. If you want to be thorough with this, you're more than welcome to. But I tend to not be that thorough. The thing I'm coming in for is mainly the battle pets and all that jazz. Uh, recipes and, all, and greens are just like bonuses for me, so to speak. So we're actually coming up to nearing the end of this actual raid. And we're just going to make our way over to Lady Bash and pretty much nuke her, so to speak. And then we'll just go over the gold for the day and all that jazz. Now you do get some transmog items like the Shattered Hand stuff. Anything with like the Shattered Hand always seems to have a fairly moderate um, sell price for them. So to be honest, I'm probably going to actually sell those gauntlets. But anything else like the Merc Blood stuff, I'm probably going to disenchant. Probably not worth my time. And yeah, not too bad. We're running at 8 minutes 35 seconds. Remember, we are on a Demon Hunter, so we are able to converse the terrain a little bit easier because Demon Hunters are amazing at doing pretty much any form of dungeon and raid farming. And yeah, it's doing not too bad, so to speak. So that being the case, I'm probably going to keep the Shattered Hand Gauntlets. We got the Warlord stuff. Now the region market value on that is 1,094 gold, but on my realm for the Min Buyer and the market value is roughly 148 or 161 gold, respectively. And I don't really find that to be much worth it to actually place on the auction house. So what I'll do is kill Lady Vash, and we did not get her thing. So that is the raid at 9 minutes 21 seconds. So that's our hour pretty much done. So let's actually go back to Dalaran and then send all of this stuff over to Giblet in which we can then go over how much we've got in the hour's worth of farming, so to speak. So we've now just sent over all of our different types of bits from our characters for Dala GG, obviously, because he was the one that's doing the farming and we'll gather all of this stuff up right about now. So let's gather all this stuff in, all of that jazz. I know I can press take all, but we'll get into that at a later point. So this is all the different types of stuff. So the Boots of Utter Darkness. Do we have any of those recipes? Yes, we do. And we can place those over Ha. And the Hurricane Boots, I believe, is here. Along with the Netherweave Cloth for the hour and the Tide Skipper, plus the Boots of the Protector which I actually don't have the pattern of, so that's an extra pattern. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're going to find the Shattered Hands gauntlets, and I'm gonna put those over there, plus disenchanting all of the other greens for additional enchanting materials, which sell fast. So it's always worth farming dungeons and raids with an enchanter, even if you put it on your demon hunter to make it more efficient. So if you get stuff that is like dud, stuff that you don't wanna sell in the auction house, you can disenchant it onto high selling, 
enchanting mats, which are always high selling, and then you can make additional gold while doing it. Now, aside from that, what we've actually got for this hour is pretty much 206 netherweave cloth. We have 29 void crystals, along with 79 arcane dust at 11 gold each, and the greater planet essence of 32 for 15 gold each. The nether vortex, we got 19 of those for two gold a piece. Um, I'm most likely going to just vendor this because it's not worth it. So what we'll do is just place that over there. And what I'll do here is that I will just vendor it because it's pointless if it's at that price to sell that on the auction house. So vendored and we'll then jump off of our mount and carry on, which is the ancient lichen. And that is from our different herbalist who went through, so Corthana. She was just herbing all of the guys for some uh, ancient lichen, which was four gold a piece, well, nearly five gold. And Fellweed for one gold, 50 silver, a lot for 21. And Dreaming Glory for one gold, nine silver, for 13 of those. Along with that, we also got three Primal Lifes, which are valued at a min buy of 60 gold or a market value of 312 gold. So whatever way you want to value it, I'm doing it a min buyout because that is clearly something going on there. So we'll double check that before I post it actually. But uh, the Motes of Life, we've got four remaining and we also got some Mana Thistle for 10 gold apiece. And we got 14 of those, so that's 140 gold just by bringing your Herbalist coming along. And we've got Marks of the Eldari, not worth that much, but they're high selling in volume. And we'll get onto this transmog. We've got some low end transmog pieces, which are the Keds Carver and the Leggings of the Sacred Crest. And they're, they, they, are, they will be selling a lot faster than the regular ones, but at a low gold rate, so to speak. So it's not overly going to be that amazing, but they're at like 0.02 sell rate for these transport pieces are 0.03, so can't complain at those sell rates for those different types of pieces of transmog. Now, getting onto the recipes, we have two patterns of hurricane boots. We have a two patterns of boots of the Crimson Hawk. We have two patterns of Red Havoc boots and three patterns of boots of utter darkness, along with one pattern or plans of the boots of the protector. Now, the battle pets of note is we got two tide skippers valued at 2,782 gold, or a region market value average of 7,000 gold. So if you're on a medium or low pop server, this is probably might be some, worth something to you if you really wanted to know. And we also got one Tainted Waveling from the first boss, which is on my realm is valued at 346 gold, but the region market value average is at 2,138. So whichever way you want to look at it. And we'll now go into worth it and back value it for the hour, which is 18,058 gold. So it's basically doing a herb farm for an hour, but we did a raid farm. So whichever way you want to look at it, so to speak. Obviously, I, it wasn't a material-based farm, but we actually managed to get an array of different types of things, so I can justify this to myself. Um, obviously, other people like to take into account that they would much more prefer selling materials, doing that hours to farm up materials, but to be honest, I would rather provide alternatives to that method if you do not wish to do a material farm, so to speak. So here is an alternative to material farming or gathering. So other than that, guys, that being the case, let's get into the gold for the day. And the gold for the day goes as follows. We have 34 males and the amount of gold we have for today is 91,200 gold. The things that are of note that we've actually got or sold is the Highborn Compendium of, the, of Sundering for 3,653 gold. Uh, a stack of 28 sallow pigment for 3,486 gold, and we also sold one imperial mana fiend for 1,453 gold, and we sold a load, I'm not going to bother counting them, a load of highborn companions of swirling tides for 2,481 gold, respectively. Now, aside from that, we also sold the vial of the sands for 54,000 gold, bringing our total up to 91,200 gold. So let's just gather all this gold in and see how much we got. So in total for the day, we have, are up to a 
gold bag value of 197,552 gold. And we also have another vial of the sands from yesterday, which sold today on the auction house, as well as the mechanist chopper reposted. So this is just clear gold profit. All of our investments have already been paid into. We would be over 200,000 gold, but obviously we had to spend a, well, the, 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 uh, we had to spend roughly over 30, 32, 33,000 gold to reinvest in our mechanist chopper and vial of the sands. So overall, we are doing very, very well. And I'm going to see if I can spend any of that 197,000 gold into providing us with more gold in the future, building out more income streams in order to pull in more gold overall. Other than that, guys, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. Have an awesome day, guys, and I shall see you soon.